Here we're gonna use calculus to solve a nice little geometry problem. So let's define two curves, C1, which is x squared plus y squared equals 32. So notice that that is equal to the circle of radius four times the square root of two. And that's because four times the square root of two squared is gonna be 32. And the other one is this parabola. It's a sideways facing parabola, y squared equals four x. The next thing that we wanna do is let A and B be the points of intersection of C1 and C2. Then we're gonna define two more points, C and D. So C will be the point of intersection of the line that is tangent to C1 at A and the line that is tangent to C1 at B. And then D will be the point of intersection of the lines that are tangent to C1 at, sorry, C2 at A and B. And then finally, our goal is to find the ratio of the area of these triangles. So it's gonna be the area of the triangle ABC over the area of the triangle ABD. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a picture going. So I'm gonna first draw my plane. And then let's go ahead and say that this distance right here is equal to four times the square root of two. In other words, it's the radius of this circle. So now I can use this trick with this string to make a perfect circle with that radius. Okay, great. We have our circle, which is C1, and now we're gonna draw our rightward opening parabola, y squared equals four x. So I'm gonna just sketch that in here like this. Great. And now notice we defined A and B to be the points of intersection of C1 and C2. So I can go ahead and put the point A up here and I can put the point B down here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for these two points in terms of their coordinates. And I can do that by just plugging in 4x for y squared into C1. So in other words, what we need to do is solve x squared plus 4x equals 32. And that's actually pretty nice to solve because we can factor it. Notice we have x squared plus 4x minus 32 equals zero. So we need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 32 and add to negative four. So we can have x plus eight and then x minus four equals zero. So that tells us that we've got two solutions to this equation. We have x equals negative eight and we have x equals four. And then notice that x equals negative eight is an extraneous solution because these curves do not intersect to the left of the y-axis. So I can go ahead and get rid of that. And that means that x equals four is our only solution. So that means we know the coordinate of a and b looks like four comma something. So let's see, this is equal to four comma something. And how can we figure out that something? Well, we can do that by plugging it into either of these and solving for y. So let's maybe solve, plug it into this and solve for y. So that gives us y squared equals 16, which tells us that y equals plus minus 4, which makes sense because this whole thing seems to be symmetric about the x-axis, and it is. So that means we're going to get um, a negative 4 down here, and then we're going to get a positive 4 up there. Okay, fantastic. Now from here, what we wanna do is construct those tangent lines, and we'll do that with calculus. So let's go ahead and construct the tangent lines to C1. So that means we need to find the derivative of Y with respect to X of C1. We can do that with an implicit derivative. So in other words, we'll take the derivative operator, act on X squared plus Y squared equals 32, and see what we get. So that's gonna give us two X plus 2y times dy dx equals zero, where I had to use the chain rule on the y squared term. So that can quickly be rearranged to give us dy dx equals negative x over y. Okay, great. So what that tells us is at our point A, which notice our point A is four, four, the slope of the tangent in other words, the derivative dy dx evaluated at that point will be negative four over four. In other words, will be negative one. So if we draw a tangent to C1 at the point A, its slope will have, have negative one. 
And then if we go at the point B, the slope of the tangent will be equal to positive one. And that's because here we have negative four over negative four. Now we could find equations of those tangent lines, but that's a little bit more work than we need to do. All we really need to see is that since this is at the coordinate four, negative four, if we go along a line that is a slope of one for four units, we'll go up four units. So in other words, if I draw this tangent line as such, then it will intersect this x-axis at a point which has an x-coordinate which is four more than the x-coordinate of this. In other words, we know that this point right here is eight comma zero. And recall that we were defining this point to be the point C. Okay, and then next, since this is whole, all symmetric with respect to the x-axis, when we draw our tangent line here, that is also going to go through that point on the x-axis. And so that is indeed the intersection point of those two tangent lines. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll erase this board and then we'll calculate the, the tangents for C2. So now let's get working on the tangents to this curve C2. And we'll use an implicit derivative again. So in other words, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of the left and right hand side of the equation y squared equals 4x. So using the chain rule that's going to give us 2y times dy dx on the left hand side and that'll give us 4 on the right hand side. And so what that tells us is that we have dy by dx is equal to 2 over y. So that's what we get if we divide 4 by 2y. Now we need to see what's happening at each of these points. So at the point A the slope of the tangent will be equal to 2 divided by 4. So in other words, it's 1 half. And how did I get 4? Because that's the y coordinate here. And then furthermore, at this point B, the slope of the tangent will be equal to negative 1 half. Again, because the y coordinate is negative 4, and that's all that's showing up in the derivative there. Okay, fantastic. So now again, we don't really need to find any equations for these tangent lines. We can just use some geometric intuition and really the definition of the slope in order to figure out where they intersect, which again, by symmetry, will be along the x-axis. Okay, so if we're applying a slope of 1 half starting at this point 4, 4 and working backwards, it's going to take 8 units to get back to the x-axis. So in other words, if we put a tangent line here, it's going to go through this x-axis at the point negative 4 comma 0. So let's talk through that because notice to go from negative 4 comma 0 to 4 comma 4, we have to go 8 units in this direction and 4 units in that direction, and that would be a slope of a half. And then the same thing goes uh, for this curve. So that is going to intersect the x-axis at the same point and recall that this is the point D. Now we can get down to working on our final goal. In other words, the ratio of the area of these triangles. So what I'm gonna do to that end is drop a line between A and B. And then notice that if we're looking for the area of A, B, C, that's gonna be twice the area of, maybe I'll call this point here M, A, M, C. And furthermore, the area of triangle ABD will be twice the area of AMD. So really all we have to do is look at the area of this triangle over here versus the area of this triangle over here. But now notice that each of these triangles share the same height. So all we really need to worry about is the length of their base. So notice that the base of AMC is four units because it goes from four zero to eight zero. And then the base of AMD is equal to eight units because it goes from negative four zero to four zero. So in other words, the area of triangle ABC divided by the area of triangle ABD will be four over eight, in other words, one over two. And that's the final answer.